1 Corinthians 5 chapter 5 verse 9 Verse 9. Let me read. I wrote unto you in my, apost- in my epistle to have no company with fornicators, not at all meaning with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous and extortioners, and with idolaters, for then must ye need go out of the world. But as it is, I wrote unto you not to keep company with if any man that is named a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an adulator or reviler or a drunkard or extortioner with such a one no not to eat can you see the verse eh? all right just read uh, verse 11 mama in your, just read in your bible aloud wherever you are <laughs> Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want us to know that there is something that is happening in our churches nowadays. Any action you take from today, be serious with God. Be serious with God. Be serious with God. To extend that you are not supposed to compromise. Don't compromise your Christianity. You know, where we are reading, you could hear Paul talking about Christians who are not supposed to just mingle with wrong Christians. Here, the Bible is talking about these Christians must make sure that they don't segregate themselves from a hate and but they must separate themselves from Christians who are revilers, adulators, extortioners. So meaning that here God wanted us not to be hypocrites. Just right, do not be hypocrites. That is my message today. Hypocrisy is done by pretenders. Hypocrisy is there to achieve the physical things before the spiritual. If you can read there, you will see that the Bible says that we are not supposed even to eat with them. You know, you know why the Bible says that? That's what why Bible is chosen. God wants us to be different. Because otherwise, we will deceive men by our hypocrisy. Tell me, you can deceive many by your hypocrisy. If you pretend and you act like you love everybody, you can end up confusing people who think you are this. You need to put yourself aside. By doing that, you are in sanctification. You are setting yourself aside for God. So hypocrisy is there to dilute you so that people will never learn anything from somebody like you. Because whatever you are going through is a lesson to someone who's watching you. I don't know if you are hearing that. If we read Psalm 26, God sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence 
So I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wonderful works. Listen to this. If you are not a hypocrite, if you guide yourself against hypocrisy, God will allow you to talk about the works of God upon your life. David, David was speaking and saying, I have not even sit with people who deceive others. People who are worthless. People who do cry. Who approve it. People who seek to be pretending all the time. And they say, I know I will be able to talk about what God is about to do. Where God takes you to a level where you will be able to see what you want to do. If you won't set yourself aside, you will perish with those who are going to perish. Can I say it again? If you are not set yourself aside, whatever happens to them, it will happen to you. The Bible shows here that hypocrisy is just a door of your destruction. If we Christians, we say we are Christians, let's check where we sit. Let's check where we gather. Let's check where we walk. Let's check what we talk. It's important for us. And this will make us to be declared by God. To be able to speak the wonderful works of God. In Matthew 7, 2 to 5. Hypocrisy makes you to correct what you were supposed to be corrected. You will correct others what you were supposed to be corrected. If you can see what uh, hypocrisy does, it, it allows you to be in things that you were supposed to overcome, but you correct others. You'll be able to tell others that you know what, this is wrong, but you find you are doing it. You can be overcome by what you say you've got, over, uh, you've got victory with it. So that is hypocrisy for you. Many people who correct others, many of them are doing the same. One time when I was coming from somewhere, I heard this thing that, you know, because I've forgiven you, do not need to judge others. You don't need to judge others because I've forgiven you. Because most of the time, when other people are their mistakes, we end up showing them their mistakes. We are partaking on their mistakes. You are born not to correct others, but to correct if you are not doing that. To correct if you are not doing that. Can you tell your neighbor, my friend? Whatever I say is wrong to you. It's because I'm not doing that. You know, what I'm teaching you is to guard your life. It's a journey to where God is taking you. Hypocrisy is not needed. Because some people are like, they are moving faster, but they are not going anywhere. That is hypocrisy for you. If we read Matthew 15, 1 to 9, you could hear Jesus say, they honor me with their mouth. They honor me with their lips. But their heart is far away. In other words, they make a vain worship. I've been experiencing that in the church. Listen to this. Before you worship God, 
deal with yourself first. Finish yourself. And know that there is no any condemnation in you. You have to be in Christ. The Bible says those who are in Christ there is no more condemnation. To be in Christ it means your relationship with him is perfected. It's not to be in church. You can still be in church and you find that you are not in Christ. Listen, think about wasting time coming to church whereas what you are doing in church is not even changing your heart. Some of you are here but you didn't sleep home yesterday. And we can't even tell you your actions are not showing where you are going. If you say you are a Christian, your heart must show us. Listen, a man's nature is able to utter what he cannot do. Tell anybody, a man's nature is having ability to utter what he cannot do. Listen, God wants us, our nature, to live us. Jesus was worried. He could see people worshipping God. But their hearts were far away. And this is still happening in the church. They worship in vain. Most of the people who are dancing in the church it's not because they are dancing. They are just doing it because it's natural. They have got natural ability to do that. You could still have that ability. You find you are doing everything in the church but it is not entering your heart. I know today when you are listening to me this hypocrisy thing will leave you. I say will leave you. Listen, if you are a hypocrite, you are becoming a good pretender. You talk what you will never do. You can tell someone I love you so much with a smile when you are not even loving the person. Many of you are here. You are just here because of a certain reason. It's a hypocrisy. Because hypocrisy makes you to do things for a certain benefit of the world. Just to be recognized that you are doing it. But you find heaven is not recognized. Can you see when you are doing what you are doing but God says you are not doing it. This is the time that when we do something, we don't do it for friends, we don't do it for neighbor, we do it for God. I don't know if you are hearing me. To show that there is hypocrisy. Many of us, when we come to church, we are just doing these things that we are doing because we are in the church. Or doing it with friends. That we are doing this together. God will judge you alone. If you read Philippians 2, 14 to 15, you will see that the Bible says, even murmuring or questioning is a hypocrisy. Doing everything with murmuring or questioning before God you have not done it. Doing something with murmuring questioning it's a hypocrisy. In Romans 12, 21 the Bible says do not overcome evil with evil but Overcome it with good. In other words, revenge is a hypocrisy. Avenging yourself is hypocrisy. If you read Romans 12, 21, you will find the scripture I'm talking about. Just to say, avenging yourself is a hypocrisy. All right, let me, let me try to explain why the Bible says that. Do you know that many people we are judging that they are wrong? Are not wrong? 
Do you know that many people will think they are wrong, they are not wrong? But what now? Now we're banali posa, banali posu. And now, if something happened to you, you think is there. Jano ngahau na na wole kadi ala se sekono na na uruke bona. By mere fighting them. Kaulwa na fela libon. You are like you are doing nothing. Ona bosa dirisilo. You are even judging them. Ebelo we abaha tola. It's a hypocrisy. Ke we ikakeji. Hypocrisy. We ikakeja. Is to judge someone on what he has never done. Is it because hypocrisy is a lie? Because hypocrisy involves lies. It is a falsehood. It establishes falsehood. Many of us, we think, when we look at other people, we end up using hearsay to judge them. We don't ask God. We don't question God because God is the best judge. Tell them and say, hypocrisy is as good as judging others. Listen, last time we talked about do not judge. But you can judge if you know. But hypocrisy is that you can judge if you know. But hypocrisy is when you judge others without a knowledge. Because you will put them where they are not belonging. And you have to act like they belong there. I found that many Christians today they have been conquered by other people's hypocrisy. They are too much hypocrisy that has affected many Christians. We are protecting the wrong people today because of the hypocrisy of someone which was justified. The moment when you hear bad things about someone, you must run away. I don't know if you are hearing that. You must run away because it will also affect your actions on how to approach the same person. How can you approach me and you tell me something when you are hearing bad things about me? This is hypocrisy by If you can't tell me what they told you, you are a hypocritical person. If now you tell me they told you this, you want it to be justified in a right way. The reason why we don't hear God today, we have established hypocrisy as a right issue. Pretenders are in front of us to extend that we will never find the truth about you. And most so, they make you a liar because they involve you in Issues that will never be answered. I just, I just want you to understand this. That many of us today, we are failing to pray and get breakthrough. Because there are many hypocrisy people. They are lying around us. They stand against us. They make us to comment on what is, what is not necessary. In Luke 13, write 10 to 15. 10 to 15. You'll find that the hypocritical people, I will say critical, they are critical. You'll find that they always judge you and fight you because you have done better than them. Listen to this. When you see people hating you, when you see people fighting you, when you see people fighting you, you will know that there is something that is in you which is better. Do not judge them. There is something in you which is better. Unless you are pressed to the, to the wall, you won't release that thing. Can I, can I tell you this? Today I want to press you to the wall spiritually so that people will understand who are you. They're, they're about to understand you and know you as an overcomer. I don't know if you're hearing me. 
People have to fight you. But what's not because you have got something yes, here outside around you. But they fight you because there's something in you. Tell us what you are facing. It's what you have contained. That devil is seeking to do with you. Amen. 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 You are going through tough times. Not because of what you is in your hands. But, because of what is in you. So, hypocritical, uh, critical people. Let me say critical people. The devil will use them. Satan to remove that thing. So whatever they are doing on you, they are fighting you. you. They are pressurizing on the corner. So that who is you will This year, people will know you. I said they will know you. I said they will know you. If, if you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hypocrisy is everywhere. Is in your work. Is in your job. Is in your family. When you appear, they say, is in your job. When you go, they start to talk. This shows they are afraid of you. Because of what is in you. I don't know if you hear me. You, you, when you appear, they just say, shem, shem, shem. Shem, shem. When you reach there, they keep quiet. They greet you. Fear nothing because there is something in you that they are bound to see this year. If, if you believe, shout hallelujah. Whoever it's not a topic. We'll never be on top. If you are pressed, it shows that where you are standing is a very important place. You cannot be marked unless you don't have a ball. You must be marked because of the ball. If you have got a destiny, you will meet hypocrisy people. The critical. I say the critical. They are around you. And you don't know them. But God is about to expose <laughs> them <laughs> so that you must not worry. They help you to your destiny. I said they help you to your destiny. Are you ready to go to your destiny? They are there to pregerize you. To make you sad. Listen. Don't lose what is in you because of them. Carry on worshiping God. Do it as you mean it. Do it like it's the last day. You are about to see God doing wonders in your life. If you believe, shout hallelujah. If we read Matthew 23, I want us to read that verse. We read from 3 to 5. From today, when you are in the church, be serious. Because there are many hypocrisy people. Just read, Mama, verse 3. Verse 3. Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do, but do not do according to their works. For they say and do not do. For they bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay themselves on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do to be seen by men. They make their philan... Sorry phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of their garments. They love the best places of fe at feast, the best seats in the synagogue. Seven. Uh, let's leave there. Let's leave them. Let's tell your neighbors. Many of us we are like in the spirit when we are in the flesh. That is hypocrisy. Listen to the verse we are reading. Can you listen to that verse we are reading? You say what? There are many people there who preach to others. But 
Don't do what they are doing. They preach this. If they don't practice it, you know what's the meaning of that? It means one day you will find them. Can you see when one day when you find someone, you, you find the person is spiritual and, and you realize it's physical, you'll be discouraged. I don't know if you're hearing me. One day you will know them. So the day you know them, don't crush what you have learned from them. Because what they are preaching is from the Bible. What they are saying is from the Bible. But they will not be practicing it. But one day you will find them. One day I will find you. Listen, not many people who are with you are Christians. So you, once you found them, distance yourself from them, but carry on with what you have learned from them. Don't crush what you have learned. One day you will find them. Let me say it again. One day you will find them. Don't crush what you have learned, which is from the word. They can preach the word. They can say whatever from the Bible. But don't do what they are doing. It is also easy to do things that the one who's teaching you is doing. So the Bible said, never do that. Once you find, run away for your life. Don't compromise your Christianity. Don't lose your soul. Tell yourself that I cannot associate with anything that can affect my soul negatively. I want to see heaven. One day, I want to go home. If you are a Christian today, I want to give you this challenge. Can I give you this challenge? Check your salvation every day. Mind what you say. Mind what you think. Check where you are going. Whatever you do, it must be influenced from the word. If you want to prosper, whatever you do, it must be influenced from the word of the living God. But if that is the case, you will give a testimony. I want to tell some people who are listening to me, many of you, your spirit is down because of your findings. But this is the time that you can see heaven. But this is the time of moving forward with Jesus. Not looking back. Paul says, I forget where I am and I run my race. There is still a race in front of you. Move forward like there is no forward. Run your race until you reach your destiny. I prophesy someone who's listening to me. I say from today, God will honor you. Your lips will declare the works of the living God. I say this is the time where you stand your ground without compromising. This is the time that when you say you are following Jesus, you mean the business. This is the time where you can just close your ears and open your ear for God only. It is your time to move forward. It is your time to make it. It is your time where your reliance is in the Lord only. And if you believe, shout hallelujah. Ask somebody say, my friend, are you ready? Because many of us, if we are ready, we will find the people we trust. Friends, family, and neighbors. When God exposed them, we will be discouraged. This is the time now of carrying on like nothing has happened. I see someone carrying on like nothing 
everything has happened. Said, this is the time of carrying on like nothing has happened. I don't know if you're hearing me. There are some Christians like that who think they can influence others to make others to do wrong decisions. Your findings are not my findings. Tell your neighbor, your findings are uh, not my findings. Whatever you find, it, it, it have got nothing to do with me. Sometimes you can be misled by your dreams. So there are many hypocrisies. Hypocritical issue is a serious issue. It will make us to pray. It will make us to worship. I mean, in vain. Today, today, when you are here, I want to declare to you, no one will affect your faith. No one will stop the plan of God upon your life. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Tell you this, don't reside where you are. Don't retire where you are. Because of what you are facing, I pray that you will make it today in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will make it in the name of Jesus. Receive the grace to prosper. Receive the grace you have been waiting for. This is the time of renouncing hypocrisy. If um, you are my friend, <laughs> if I found that you are eating what is forbidden, <laughs> I'm not supposed to compromise and stay with you. I, I don't know if you are hearing me. me. If I found that you are doing, this is the time of breaking wrong friendship. <laughs> if, I, if I found you are doing wrong, <laughs> I must really fight it. This is the time now <laughs> of exposing. Darkness. I don't know if you're hearing me. And you carry on with your life. I love, I, I love this man. His name is Lot. If you read about him, you'll find that where he was staying, he was always staying in the gate. And his gate was locked. He never wanted his children to associate with the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't know if you're hearing that. When people pass there, he was sitting there watching them passing. He never wanted anything to be mixed up with his children. Until when he was, was sitting there, he saw angels passing. In his heart, it clicked. These are angels. These are people here who don't belong here. He called them inside. And that's how he was saved. You will never be saved. Until you differentiate left and right. I don't know if you are hearing me. If you carry on mixing, you are about to be like them. You will fall like them. You will end up doing what they are doing. I just want to prophesy someone who is listening to me now. Your door of victory is open. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read the last scripture we close. Proverbs 3, verse 7 to 8. 3, verse 7 to 8. Proverbs 3, verse 7 to 8. Read that scripture. Verse 7 to 8. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. You are hearing. Do not be wise unto your eyes. Do not do not play hypocrisy. God is watching. It will be health to your flesh. If you don't play hypocrisy, it will be health to your flesh. If you want to be somewhere, pretenders, it's not part of you. It's not your portion. People who don't live right are not your friends. I mean, 
Can you just set a street record? Whereby you'll be able to say, I'm not, I don't want to do what is wrong. Look what happened to Jabez. Who said, I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to cause pain. I know you will extend my territory. There is, there is a blessing in doing that. If you are serious, you'll be an example. Set your record straight. Tell everybody, set your record straight. A record of living right. Sometimes it will be like a stupid for a while. But it's a good health to you. It's a good health to you. I want to pray for you. Pray for us. Let's pray for us. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I found the truth. That when you are living right. Even sickness is afraid of you. I don't know if you hear me. If you are living there like this, sickness is a freedom. You. When it's sickness, you'll just hear it on the other side. Hear it on the other But it's afraid of you. Think, think about what we're doing here. I've been preaching here for many years. Sickness is a freedom. When sickness comes, God must allow it to prove that it can do anything. I don't know if you are hearing me. Whatever you meet, God must allow it to prove that it is nothing to you. Let me prophesy to someone who is listening to me. This year, this year, people who think you won't make it, they are about to see your life of miracles. I say a life of miracle is about to follow you. I say it's about to follow you. Listen, I don't care how much you are heading. If your life is straight and you set a straight record, you are about to be a testimony in front of your enemies. They will try to fight you, but they won't conquer you. They will try to to block you, but you will pass with a high speed. I see you being successful in the name of Jesus. Receive the grace to prosper. Receive the grace to prosper. Receive success from today in the name of Jesus. I want to say congratulations.